Now let's talk about arrays. Uh, an array is a container or a list of objects. Here on the screen is a visual aid to hopefully help you understand the concept of an array. For example, this would be an array called fruits. As you can see, there's various different fruits in this list. Now, one key thing to know about arrays is that this list is numbered, but as you noticed, it's zero indexed. What that means is the count starts at zero. So the first item is not one, it's zero, right? As you can see, zero, one, two, three, four, five, not one, two, three, four, five. Real quick, take a second to let that sink in because I guarantee you, you're going to have an error because you forgot this at some point early in your career. So this is very, very important. It's a fundamental thing to know about arrays. Now, of course, arrays don't always have to be fruit, right? We can have an array of integers, right? Let's say we wanna call this ages. And this represents uh, the age of everybody currently taking this course. Another thing to know about arrays is that they're always in order. Now by in order, I don't mean alphabetical. I don't mean numerical, as you can see with these different ages, right? I mean the order that they were put into the array. Let's illustrate that and a lot of other things you can do with an array in some code. Here I am in a brand new playground. Remember last video I said I wasn't gonna go through the step every time of like file new playground and naming it. So go ahead and do that on your own and you'll see this empty playground to start with. All right, so let's create that array. So of our ages, equals, and it's an array of, let's say, the different ages, 21, comma, space, 55, comma, 19. I'm just gonna put in like eight of these real quick. Just random numbers and whatever, 71, that's it. Um, I think there's, what, eight of these in here? Cool. Now, real quick, we just declared this array, and what I talked about was the order that I put them in. So, you know, I put in 21 first, then 55, then 19. That's what I meant that they will always be in order. Again, not numerical order. And again, back to type inference, ages knows that it is an array of ints because I've put all ints in here. Now, however, let's cut these. I'm gonna do command X to get rid of them because I'm gonna paste them back in. So I'm gonna type them again. Now I have an empty array, but you'll see Xcode is saying empty collection literal requires an explicit type. Uh, when I had all integers in there, Xcode knew, all right, ages is an array of ints, but I don't have anything in there, so it doesn't know. Uh, when you want an empty array, which is actually quite common, very often you'll, you'll declare an empty array, but if you do that, you have to give it a type, and you have to put the type in the uh, brackets to let it know it's an array. So this is saying ages is an array of type ints. So that way, even if you declare an empty array, Xcode knows, hey, I'm expecting an array of ints. And then later on, if you try to put in a string or a Boolean, Xcode's gonna be like, no, no, can't do that. This is an array of ints. But let's put those ages back in there and we can delete our type declaration because we don't need that. We'll use the type inference. Now let's talk about some of the features of an array and how you can use it. So first up, we can always get the count of an array by doing ages.count. And this gives you the number of items in the array. So if I hit this little play button on the left to run it, you'll see on the right, we printed out eight. So that means there's eight items in this array and you can count it for yourself. There are in fact eight ages in there. Another common thing you wanna do with arrays is access the elements that are in there. For example, you can do ages.first and this will return the first item in this array, 21. You can see it print out 21 here. 21 is the first age. Uh, same thing you can do ages.last, same thing. Now it's going to uh, give me 71, right? As you can see right there, because that is the last element of the array. Now real quick, a little sneak peek into optionals. You'll notice ages.last was an optional. This question mark means it's an optional. We're gonna dive into that later. I'm not gonna get into that now because we're just starting out. But the reason it returns an optional is because ages could be an empty array. And if you have an empty array, what's the last object in an empty array? Like nothing. So you don't want the app to crash. So that means it returns an optional, which means it can be nil. Again, if that was confusing, you don't know what I'm talking about. We're going to discuss that in a later video, but I wanted to explain to you what this little question mark meant. That basically meant that like, this can be nil. This can have no value. Uh, and again, in the case of an empty array, there's no last object in an empty array. All right, more accessing uh, items in the array. So we did first, we did last. What if you want one in between? Well, you can do ages, and this is called subscripting. We do brackets and then put in a zero. This is where you put in the index number. So ages at index zero is going to be 21. So it's gonna be the same as first because we did index zero. You see it prints off 21 there, but you can also do you know the fourth one if you want for three. Remember zero indexed. So the fourth item is gonna be three because it goes zero, one, two, three. Um, so now the fourth item is 47. You see it prints off 47. So that is how you can access individual elements in the array. And again, this goes back to the array being ordered. It's always gonna be in the order you put it in. That way you can reliably say, give me the item at index three, and it's always gonna be the same. If it was not ordered, 
item at index three, it would be different every time. So that is why the array is ordered. Now, aside from accessing items in the array, we can actually manipulate our array. Let's say we got a new student and we wanted to add a new age to the end of it. So I can do ages dot append and you can see new element int. And this is type safety in action, right? Because ages is an array of ints, it's not gonna let me put anything other than an int in there. Again, this is the whole safety aspect of the Swift language. So let's say we wanna put 99 in there for our new student. Now, uh, a way to print out stuff is do print ages. And if I run it down here in the console at the bottom, it's gonna print out my ages. And now you can see 99 is now appended. So the thing when you append stuff is you're appending it to the end of the array. So that's why 99 went there. And let's say you didn't want to append it to the end, you wanted to put it at a specific spot, you can do ages.insert, and you can see new element, which is an int, again, type safety. So let's say we want to put uh, 44 at, and now we're putting an index, right? We want to put it at index, uh, let's say zero. We want to put it at the beginning. So insert 44 at index zero right at the beginning. Now, if I run it, we're going to print ages down here. And now you can see 21 is no longer at the beginning, 44 is at the beginning. And the last three things I want to show you is how we can uh, sort our array, how we can reverse our array, and how we can shuffle it, right? So let's do that. Uh, so ages.sort, and you can see if we print it, now we're going to get this array in numerical order, right? 19, 21, 22, 37. So sorting an array is as simple as that. And we can do the same thing to reverse our array. So if we do ages.reverse, there you go, and we run it. Now, uh, we didn't do sort anymore, so it's gonna reverse what's actually in there on line three. Or actually, no, we, we added the 44. So 44 is at the end, 21, 55. You can see it's in reverse order from what we have up here. And then as you may be following along here, we can do shuffle as well, shuffle. And that will shuffle up all the numbers in the array. So you see, we got the array down there, and now it's all shuffled. So those are some basic things you can do with an array. Now, arrays are used so much throughout code and building apps. Uh, a very common thing that you may see on a day-to-day -day basis is maybe your, your Twitter feed, right? Your Twitter feed that you're scrolling through is an array of tweets. It's just a list of tweets that show up on your screen. And same thing with your Instagram feed. Your Instagram feed is an array of posts that show up on your screen. So uh, arrays are used everywhere. It's a very foundational knowledge. I uh, hope you got that. As always, ask questions in the comments or, or on the Slack channel. On to the next video.